Okay, well, thanks to Brian, wherever he went, for asking me to do this presentation. I'm Tim Kreitz, W5GFO, and this presentation is called the Loop on Ground Receive Antenna Theory and Application. How I discovered it, why I'm using it, and the basics of how it works. We're, I'm not going to try to get into too much minutiae on the theory, but we'll get a good working idea of, of what to expect if you decide to build one of these. How I discovered the loop on ground antenna was I talk on weeknights on 40 meter sideband with a group called the Arizona Roundtable Group. These guys were talking about on, on really noisy nights, they were talking about how are you receiving tonight? What are you using tonight? Now, and a couple of the guys that are in that group, a couple of them have a lot of land and they're able to use beverage antennas, which ideally, if you know anything about the beverage antenna, it's arguably the, the best receive antenna that the average ham radio operator can build. The thing is, they take up a lot, and I mean a lot, of real estate. There are different versions of the beverage antenna, and one of them is called the beverage on ground antenna. The loop on ground antenna is a variation on that. And there are a couple of guys using beverage antennas, and there are a couple of guys in that group who on noisy nights, they use a loop on ground antenna. So that's what got me interested. They were hearing things a lot better than I was in some cases. So I started digging into this antenna and what it is and how it works. So we're going to kind of talk about my journey through building it and what I think of it and how it works. And then I've got a video toward the end of the presentation showing just how effective it can be in certain situations at removing noise. Quick overview here. Primary advantage of a loop on ground is improved signal to noise ratio on the low band. It's generally most effective 40, 80, and 160, although it can be made effective for 20 meters as well. There is a guy named Matt Roberts, who's a computer guy and engineering guy in Oklahoma, and he is sort of credited as being the de facto inventor of this particular design. And what I built is his design, but I made a few modifications of it to suit my property and to suit the bands that I wanted to use. So during periods of high noise is when these are the most effective. They are selective as far as their uh, received directivity and we'll talk about all of that. The important thing about these types of antennas to note is that as horizontal an antennas are placed closer to the ground or on the ground, they become vertically polarized. And that's the advantage of this antenna is that it receives basically as a bi-directional antenna. So if you guys know anything about beverage antennas, if you were to unterminate a beverage antenna, this is sort of a miniature version of that as a loop on the ground. It's generally 90 degrees left and right on the loop to wherever the feed point is, wherever the transformer is, and we'll get into all of that. On the right is the model that uh, Matt came up with. By the way, his call sign is KK5JY. That's his model on the right for a 15 by 15 by 15 by 15 antenna. Then you've got the view from above. These are both his drawings that I took off of his website. So his rationale for this is that a 15 by 15 by 15 by 15 loop that is fed with a three to one isolation transformer at the corner is the best for 20 through 160. It's a compromise. Of course, this is a compromise antenna. Most are. His rationale on this is that you're going to get the, basically you're going to get the best signal to noise ratio across all bands on this. I did mine a little bit bigger because I don't necessarily care about 20 as much in this application. I was mainly interested between 40 and 160. And also I've found that I really, really like using this antenna as a shortwave receiver. It's really good full time just as a shortwave receiving antenna. It displays really good characteristics as far as being able to pull the noise floor kind of down. It's a highly attenuated antenna and it does attenuate a certain amount of, of the signal with it, but because it's directive, and also because it becomes omnidirectional as the angle of the received signal increases, it does a really good job of sort of scrubbing the noise out of the signal on a noisy night. So, when you use that at your house, mm -hmm. is it on grass or is it on concrete? Mm -hmm. 
It is on the ground, on the earth, in the backyard. Yeah, we will we will talk about that. How I have mine laid out is I've got mine laid out 30 by 25 by 30 by 25. And I have it fed in the northwest corner. That's where my transformer and my feed line is that go inside. The main lobes are northeast and southwest, which kind of suits my preference. Now, that works really good for DX coming in from Oceania and from Europe. It does a really good job, especially in those situations with that low angle DX coming in of getting the noise out on noisy nights. Stuff that's closer, stuff that's more NVIS, you do notice a difference, but it's not as drastic. Although overall, it's a very clean sounding receive antenna. But what I've got here is basically an antenna that's real close to a quarter wave on 160 and it's close to a full wave at about 35 meters. In fact, it is a full wave at 35 meters. So the bigger these things are, the more sensitive they are, obviously. You've got more surface area. And also, the length of an antenna affects how well you hear certain frequency ranges. For me, this was the best way to go. It worked out to be about, I don't know, maybe the loop itself, maybe 160, 175 ohms, something like that. And that's where the transformer comes in. The transformer, by the way, is uh, three to one. And we'll talk about how to build it. It provides several advantages. One is that it basically creates a short circuit, a uh, DC short circuit between the loop side and the feed side. That also helps preserve the directivity of the antenna. It makes it a little more immune to static and more immune to being you know, struck by lightning or something like that. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is basically everything I used to build my loop on ground antenna. You don't have to use fancy coax and you don't have to use expensive wire. This can be made very economically. You can use 75 ohm television coax if you want to, because it's you're not going to transmit with it. It's receive only. The only thing is, if you decide to go 75 ohms on the feed point going into your shack, you're going to have to do the, the transformer winding slightly differently to match 75 ohms going in. So mine I did with 50 ohm, and what I did on the coax side is I basically went down to the pilot truck stop, bought the cheapest 50 ohm coax I could find, and that's what I'm using for my, for my receive coming into the shack. I recommend 50 ohm because that kind of works with how the transformer goes together. You'll need some soldering equipment. You'll need some hardware, which we'll talk about. You're going to need a, a weatherproof project box, which we've all seen these. It can be pretty small because the transformer is not very big. And the uh, ferrite core that you're going to use to build the transformer is also not very big. So you can get, I think this one was two and a half by three by four or something like that. But the important thing on these is that you want them to be weatherproof because it is going to go outside and you can either bury it if you want to, or you can just leave it laying on top of your lawn. And I have mine laying right by one of my antenna masts on the surface of the, of the ground. So you'll need coated magnet wire to build the transformer. Enamel coated magnet wire is what I use. You will need a SO239 connector. You're going to need something adhesive. I recommend five minute epoxy for this because you're going to want to go around where you drill the hole in your project box for the SO239 connector and for your loop connectors. You're going to want to weatherproof those and, and epoxy is a good way to do that. I used a combination of epoxy and then I used a set of industrial two-sided tape to keep the binocular core in one place inside the transformer box. The binocular core you're going to use is a number 73 Fairrite brand is what I've got. It's a Fairrite brand core. They're really small, but they're built for these frequency ranges from about 30 megahertz down is where they, they work the best as isolation transformers. I use number 12 coated wire, copper wire stranded for my loop on the ground. You don't have to use anything that fancy. It's just what I had. And then you're going to need, getting to your question, you're going to need some lawn staples if you do it this way, because what you're going to want is eventually you're going to kind of want your yard to grow over the antenna so that you can't see it and so that you can mow your lawn and do all the stuff you want to do in the backyard without yanking it up or having your lawnmower blade grab it and tear it to pieces or getting ruined. And so I used about 125 of these lawn staples on mine once I had it laid out dimensionally the way I wanted it. I just started going around with those lawn staples 
with a little tack hammer and got it down as low as I can. And now, several months later, I'm at a point where you can't even really see the antenna at all. You don't even know it's there. When I first put it down, my wife was like, what have you done now? <laughs> I was like, don't worry. Trust me. You got to trust me on this. It's going to be okay. She was like, all right, all right. So, yeah. So, now you can't even see it. Is it one or two inches below the surface? You know, I don't know about burying the loop itself. That would be an interesting experiment, but I haven't seen any models on that. And I haven't seen it in application like on any videos or any websites. Uh, mine is right on the surface of the ground. Some of it's kind of covered up by dirt, but most of it at this point is now covered up by winter grass. And you'll see a picture of that. Roger? Supposedly our ground conductivity is so bad around the dirt. got something laying on the ground that's effectively several feet up. Okay, well, that would make sense. I would not argue with that a bit. And these, much like a beverage antenna, these these would work theoretically a foot or two off of the ground. Just like if you had a beverage antenna that was two or three or four feet off the ground, it would work. It still becomes vertically polarized, and that's one of the main things about having it near the ground is taking the horizontal antenna and converting it to vertical polarization. That's one of the things that gives it its directivity. And it's also one of the things that pulls the noise floor down. And along those lines, you should probably turn off any preamps that you're using to get the most out of this antenna. So if you're using a receive preamp on your radio and you're listening on 80 or 40 meters, go ahead and shut it off. Because basically what that's doing, among other things, is bringing the noise floor back up. So that's just a little note I thought of uh, as we were going through here. So you're going to need soldering equipment, as I said, and then you're going to need a little bit of hardware to kind of finish the job up. So next slide. The armor tree is critical. It is not critical. I've seen you guys build these as octagons, hexagons, all kinds of weird shapes. I think more than anything is what length you pick and how you build the transformer are more pertinent actually than uh, the shape of the antenna. There's the transformer that I built. This is my transformer before it went outside. You can see I've got my ferrite core there, just double-sided tape with some industrial two-sided tape to the bottom. After I wound the transformer, it goes to the SO239 on this side. And then it just goes to, I just used hardware I had at the house just you know, I just made sure it looked the same and everything was the same size for when I drilled all the holes in the in the job box. And then I used some horseshoe connectors inside and out. And then those blue ones are where the loop connects. And so your turns ratio for 50 ohms is going to be two turns on the coax side. And it's actually going to be six turns. You're going to want to do six turns for 50 ohm coax on the loop terminal side. Uh, and literally, I just put it outside. You're gonna wanna make sure you've got, make sure it comes with this little gasket to keep the moisture out of it. I haven't had any trouble with mine. It's been through rainstorms and all kinds of stuff and it just works great. The one thing about this transformer, and obviously this is a, this is a receive antenna anyway, but you wanna make sure you don't put yourself in a position where you transmit into this antenna. That could mess up the transformer for sure, especially if you shoot 500 or 1,000 watts into it. Your radio is gonna bark at you at least, and you might mess it up at worst, depending on what kind of radio you're using. But that's how I did mine. It's very simple. Like I said, when you, uh, you're you gonna to wanna to make sure you get a good connection with that magnet wire, get the ceramic coating off of your connections. But other than that, that uh, ceramic coated magnet wire does a good job of building this particular transformer. That's how it goes together. If you're on a noisy night and you're receiving from your main lobes is where you're gonna have the best performance out of the antenna. So if you're receiving DX on a noisy night from your main lobes, you're gonna be like, wow, this is the greatest antenna in the world. There are gonna be other nights where depending on what band you're on and what the conditions are like, where basically it just makes everything a little quieter, including the signal you're using. So it's not a perfect antenna. And that's why I wanted to mainly use mine from 40 meters down, because those tend to be in the summertime, the noisiest bands. And summertime is when I got interested in building this. But here's my backyard with who thought we'd need to mow in January, right? But there's a bunch of winter grass growing in my backyard that I haven't put down. One of the reasons I haven't mowed too is because I'm kind of trying to fill in where the antenna is. But that's how mine runs in my backyard. 30, 25, 30, 25. And then down here in the bottom right corner is where my feed point is, where my transfer is. You can bury it. I've seen guys bury it. 
I've seen web pages and a lot of videos on YouTube where they decided to go ahead and bury it. What I recommend is if you do some heat shrink around the metal parts and that sort of thing as best you can, and corro your corrosion factor is going to go way up if you put it underground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And directly. Yeah, that would work. That would work fine too. That's the beauty of the simplicity of this is you, you can do do it basically any way you want to. You just want the you just want the transformer to behave correctly is the main is the main thing. But you can weatherproof it and you know do the niceties of it however you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do that. But the box is really small in the case of this particular antenna. And so where I have it, I've got it tucked between the edge of the house and one of my antenna masts where it's not going to get run over with a lawnmower or stepped on or something like that. That's just kind of how it worked, how it worked out for me. It just sounds really good. Like I said, one of the things that I did as of today is I ordered myself one of those SDR dongles that goes down to like 400 kilohertz and then up to however many gigahertz, those ones that you just plug into your computer. And then I ordered some adapters. I needed a bunch of different adapters for different applications. And I got one that goes SMA SO239 so that I can actually unplug that loop on ground coax from my antenna switch box and put it into that SDR dongle and then use it as a receive antenna for SDR. So it has a lot of different applications besides just being a low noise antenna. It's going to attenuate a full S unit if you build it the way that, that I did. Mine attenuates generally about a full S unit. The next thing is the video. And so I'll, I'll be quiet here. Um, this will show you just how much noise it cuts out without cutting out a lot of signal when when everything's right. This was a really, really noisy night on 40 meters. Quick little demonstration of the loop on ground antenna, how much noise it cuts out. Here's 40 meters on the loop on ground on a very noisy night. Here's when we go to the 40 meter dipole. Listen to how much more noise. A lot of Back to the log. Pretty drastic difference, right? I just thought that was pretty cool. I, a couple of you guys asked me to put a video online. I can't remember if I did or not. But there anyway, you go. Anyway, that video is on the, I think it's on the Odessa page. So that's what I made that for. Everybody was curious when I first built it as to how well it worked. So as you can see right there, man, that, that makes things a lot more pleasant on a noisy night. They're easy to build. They're not very expensive. All of the materials are red readily available and they're fun to play with. Any questions? Any other, any further discussion, Brian? How do you think that might work if, like, say it was uh, mounted along the top of your fence? Well, it would start to change characteristics. It would definitely start to lose some of its uh, directivity. But, I mean, it would work. There's no way it would not work. I just don't think it would attenuate noise as well as it does on the ground. It's going to be less vertically polarized the higher up off the ground, and and also your impedance is going to change, and that may change how you do your transformer. But I mean, you could customize the transformer too if you wanted to do that. You know, Roger. Yeah. When you mentioned the fact that this is a vertically polarized antenna, that kind of set off an alarm because I've always heard that noise is vertically polarized. Well, uh, apparently you, atmospheric noise is, but man-made noise is mostly horizontally polarized. There you go. That's how I understand it too. Makes a better antenna. Would it have uh, wire? My transmitting antennas, yes, they're all wire antennas. I've got a 10 meter vertical dipole, 40 meter inverted V dipole, and an 80 meter inverted V dipole. So if you're, yeah, if you were using a beam and you were really honed in on something, it, you know, you'd have different results for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything else? All right. Thanks for asking me to do this. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for helping. You bet. You bet.